In this video, we're going to create our success and fail alerts, define a get all looks controller in our backend, show all our looks on the front end, push any look so that it appears when submitted, and refactor our looks API. Let's start by defining our new controller. We're going to create a get method that when called will retrieve all the looks that any user has submitted. Let's also include the handle error function that I just made. This method that we created is called all looks and it will grab all the looks from the database and it will sort them descending. And then we'll execute this and if there's an error then we'll handle the error and respond with a 500. If we don't find any looks, we'll respond with 404. Once we do get back the looks, we'll respond with the looks. The next thing that we want to do is create our alerts for success and failure after submitting a new look. We're going to define at the top of our controller, a variable for our success and a variable for our failure. We'll make sure to include the dependency up top for alert. The alert that we're using here is from our Angular strap. All the keys that we just defined are uses of the Angular Strap alert service. Alert container we've already defined within our modal. And that is defined right here. You can also see where we've added our spinner. The keys that we've defined are pretty self-explanatory. We'll have a title and a content that will show us whether or not we've successfully saved or not saved the look that we've added. The container, we just went over that. The type, the warning will display an orange or red text box area. Success will display as green. Duration is eight seconds for the amount of time that the alert will be shown. I wanna make sure that we refactor this HTTP post to instead use our API factory. So now what we need to do is actually create our looks API factory. Let's add this to our index so we don't forget. Now we need to make sure that we inject this into our controller. At the beginning, we created a get all looks 
controller in our back end. Now let's create the corresponding function on our front end. I can choose to set cache to true here as part of the HTTP parameters. Now I'm going to use my get all looks function and display all the looks when the controller is loaded. Let's take another look at our add scrape post function. So by adding this alert success dot show, it will show our alert that we defined earlier, and we're attaching the show method as part of an Angular strap method that works with alert. You can see down here that we're already doing alert fail dot show. So we're using our variable that we defined, alert fail, and then we're showing this in the instance that we don't get back what we posted. So let's go ahead and save everything so we can test this out. In your lecture files for this video, there should be a main HTML file. Go ahead and add that to your project. So the only thing that I've added now to our main HTML file is a new area to display our looks. We're not going to be using Angular Grid at the moment. We'll add that later. But this is just something basic that will hopefully display all the looks that we've submitted. That being said, let's make sure that we add looks as an array to our main controller because we're going to be iterating over looks and looks right here. ng repeat look and look. So we're, we're going to take all of the looks from our database and assign them to looks. So looks will become an array. And then for each part of the looks, we'll call it look. And then we can use the various values that we've assigned to our look and simply use them. So notice how we've called each of our looks as we've given it a title. It's automatically populated with an ID as well as an image URL which is found in our uploads folder. In here we're also attaching the username. So on refresh, we see that there's nothing showing up. Let's look in our node console. We see that we are actually getting back all the looks. So we're getting a correct 300. So we should have at least have a couple looks show up. Let's take a look at this in our console. So I actually did this on purpose because this happened to me a couple times where I was trying to figure out what kind of error I was having or why this wasn't working and I kept on getting looks found object object so it took me a while to actually figure this out but what happens is you can't log data objects on the same line when you're logging this to console so this has to be on a separate line if we want to use it this does work. If I fail to get the looks and then I'm passing an error, I'll usually get an error in the console, so I assume that it was fine with the data, but it's actually not. So let's save this now and see what happens. So looks are found and they're being logged here. So the issue is that in this instance, we need to log data data because the objects are being found within the data attribute. So we're getting back the data, which is an array of objects. We simply need to define what we're receiving as data, right? And this original data is this, right? We can name this anything. We can say results and then say results.data, and it will be the same thing. Okay, there you go. Also in this lecture, we included our alert. So let's see what happens when we try to add a new look. We also, I want to mention that we added a splice down below. So once we have added a look, it should take that look and add it to the first element in our looks.
And the only reason why I didn't is because I am still using data. If I change this to results, then it would work. But instead, I'm just going to change this back to data. And let's try again. So the reason why our look wasn't pushing is because this needed to be data dot data and you also may need to restart your server in order for the changes to take effect. And once you do that, then the look that you add will be automatically added to the front end.